Back after a long summer off, tanned and rested our political analysts from the left, representing the Democratic point of view, Doobie Olbermann McDowell, <laughs> the former moderator of this very program, and on the right for state representative, former state representative, Brian Limbaugh Flaherty, with the GOP <laughs> view. I know that you two don't allow, <laughs> don't align with those two, but I just thought we'd have some fun. Well, Welcome back, by the way. You. Good to be back. And so we're going to talk about a lot of things today, but Brian, you have some breaking news in the 5th Congressional District race? Yeah, uh, the 5th uh, District right now on the Republican side has had four candidates chasing around, and uh, it looks very close as if uh, State Senator Andrew Rohrabach, who represents the entire northwest corner uh, of the state of Connecticut, uh, is starting to move around and may decide within two weeks whether or not he'll get in the race. And how does that impact the race? Well, it's, it's Senator Rohrabach, Andrew's got the largest, his district is, has the largest footprint on the 5th Congressional District. And among the Republicans right now, there is no one who is an elected official. And Andrew is one of the most hardworking uh, brass tacks, politicians, members of the state senate that you're ever going to see. This is a guy who does his office hours and uh, works hard, doesn't do a lot of press conferences, but one of the interesting things is that the footprint of his district in the state senate on the 5th, there are a lot of voters who in the past few elections are used to voting for both Chris Murphy and Andrew Rohrbeck. He's got a crossover appeal, okay. and I think he's just a very serious, deliberate uh, a public official, and who it could change the race if he gets in. Who does it hurt the most of the other candidates? Hard to say. Lisa Foley's been getting probably the most airtime. Mark Greenberg, the, the two got the highest profile, sure. but I think it affects the whole race if he decides to get in. Good enough. Let's talk about that Senate race. We do have a big Senate race. Let's show you the candidates here. Let's begin uh, with the Democrats. There are five of them right now. Former Secretary of the State Susan Bysiewicz, Congressman Chris Murphy, State Representative William Tong, Silvestro Salcido, an attorney in Bridgeport, uh, former Army uh, veteran, and Lee Whitnam, uh, an author from Greenwich. And let's talk about the um, GOP race as well. Four candidates, freshly minted in the race. Of course, Chris Shea is in the corner. Brian Cahill, Hartford attorney. Jason McCoy, the uh, mayor of Vernon. Linda McMahon, the 2010 nominee. And, of course, Mr. Shays. And, Doobie, I'll begin with you with the Democratic race. Where does it stand? Chris Murphy, obviously leading the pack in some of the polls and in the money race. Yeah, and this is a, uh, a race between Chris Murphy and Susan Beisowitz for the, for the nomination with all due respect to the other candidates. I mean, that's what the polls show. Um, and they're both well known to members of the party. And uh, I mean, Murphy at this point has the edge. The polls show that and has a money edge at this point. But it's really Murphy and Beisowitz. So it's his race to lose. Yes, I would. I would it would agree with that at this point. William Tong surprised a lot of people by raising so much money that first quarter. And, and that was um, commendable, and I think the media had a little love affair going with um, um, William Tong for a while. But if you look at the polls, um, and he will, I'm sure, discount the polls, um, he, he got something like 1%. That's going to hurt future fundraising. And there are two, already two very strong candidates in the race, and, and I'm not sure there's room for, for another one. The media seem to love Chris Murphy. They seem to pick on Susan Bysowitz still. Why is that? <laughs> uh, I don't see it that way, actually. You don't? Okay. No. I, I mean, I think Murphy is getting the most attention by virtue of the fact that he, it, I mean, the polls, let's, let's face it, a lot, a lot of what the media cover um, is, is poll-driven, and I think um, Murphy's polls. But I think, I think what you hear everybody say about Bysowitz is, is never count her out. Yeah, I mean, she's won a lot of statewide elections here. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. She, is a she has strong name recognition. The Republicans and some of the polls have been quite enlightening, Brian. Yeah, you know, it, Linda McMahon right now, uh, who spent $15 million of her own money to come in second place two years ago, is, is, is back in the race, I think is making the biggest splash. I think the indication of the, all those candidates you just uh, listed on both parties is because you have an open Senate seat. This doesn't happen often. It's now happened here in Connecticut a couple of times. But for the Republican Party, with Christopher Shays getting into the race, I think those are the top two are getting most of the attention. Uh, and the party has to decide what the primary is going to be about. Is it about someone that checks, that meets up on a party checklist mm -hmm. that some people may draw up, or is it determining the strongest person possibly to go into that general election? And in the last Quinnipiac poll, Christopher Shays looked very, very strong in the general. Linda McMahon looked very strong in the primary. And Shays announcing this past week, um, I think he's really got to start 
moving around the state, you really want to show people that you want the job. You did a very soft, very quiet announcement, which left some people shaking their heads. Are the foundations of, of how people vote in this state changing? President Obama's approval rating down to 48 percent. It's definitely not going in a good direction. At the same time, though, we're still a long ways away from the 2012 election. So I, I would not look at Obama's numbers and say those are what the numbers are going to be for that next election and therefore that that's going to affect races uh, down the ballot. Can Linda McMahon win a general election? That's a very good question because she seems to be topping out at about 45% of the polls and can't seem to close the deal. She couldn't do it two years ago, ran out of steam quickly at the end of the party. But I think that David Orner said in the first segment, this is going to be a kitchen table election. The recession is still very strong and people are going to look at each other and decide, how, you know, what's going on? What is our family going to be like? What are the challenges? And who are, who's speaking to those either through the primary election and into the general? Is that a problem with the electorate or a problem with Linda McMahon? Because when was the last time a Republican, well, last time a Republican won was 82, right? Lowell Weicker won real election. Lowell Palmer Weicker Jr. But yeah. this, this, is, this is a winnable election. This is a toss-up. There's no inevitability for Chris Murphy, I'm sorry to say, on the Democratic side. And that's why this will be a very competitive, competitive race. But as a Democrat, I would say, fine, bring on Linda McMahon. She spent all that money. Uh, two years ago and wasn't able to win. Um, I, her advisors, I'm sure, are encouraging her to run because that's what advisors do because then they, <laughs> are, they, they become campaign advisors who, uh, who benefit from the race. But I think, you know, the, the overselling that she did two years ago where everybody in Connecticut received more um, mailings from her than Publishers Clearinghouse has sent over the last half century, it, it just, it didn't work. I don't think it's going to work again. You know, some of the polls show her disapproval ratings to be rather high, mm -hmm. uh, yet you never hear a person say a bad word about her who's met her. So what does well, she do about that? She has to to reintroduce herself in a certain way, knowing what happened in the last election and tell Connecticut, show Connecticut who was Linda McMahon, just as Christopher Shays has to do. By the way, it would be nice to see Jason McCoy break through here. He's had a very successful career as mayor of Vernon. But, uh, but I think really this is going to be a pocketbook campaign. There is no favorite going into this race. And, uh, and, and this is going to be, I think, a nonpartisan election. These candidates are going to have to say, this is who I am. This is what I'd like to do for you. So how does Mayor McCoy emerge out of this pack? Is it possible? It's po anything is possible. Well, right now, it's, it's also difficult. The money issue is, is a major, major factor. Chris Shea's getting into this race and his polling strength with the general electorate in the state that's mostly um, unaffiliated voters, I think it makes it a little tough for him. We had David Orner on the program. What are the prospects of uh, Republicans taking back that seat in the fourth? That's they used to be the most Republican uh, exactly. district in the state. He's a very serious-minded candidate. I, th I think it'll. Uh, I think he'll have some very close races. And, and, and now, would the Democrats rather run against um, Linda McMahon? Because Chris Shays is showing. Than, than, well, yeah, if you look I mean, at the polls, Shays does better in the general election. So I, I think it's fair to say, again, bring on Linda McMahon. Okay, we're going to take a quick timeout. With Debbie and Brian, we'll be back with more in a moment.